Hello everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, we are going to work on our roles and permissions. So uh, let's get into it, guys. Now, before we do that, I would like to apologize, guys. We haven't had any episodes over the last couple of days. I was unfortunately sick. So if you have made a comment on the videos or asked some questions and I haven't replied, that's why I'll try to get to all the comments as soon as I can. So now let's get back to the video. So what I would like to do, guys, for today's episode is implement a simple role system that allows us to have three roles, basically an admin, a user that can do everything possible. Uh, we will have an editor, can someone that can uh, publish uh, posts and also create uh, categories. And then we will also have a user, basically a regular user that can like and comment. Of course, editors can also like and comment and admin can also do you know, everything an editor can, okay? Now, maybe we will have another like super admin, something like that. But that's basically it, this system. We're not going to have more uh, roles than this, okay? Because we have a very simple application. So what I will do is we are going to have a role column on our users table. And we are going to use that to identify and, you know, know the user's role and then prevent them from performing certain actions. A very, very simple system. So let's go ahead and start off by first creating a migration. So I'll open up the terminal and type in PHP Artisan, make migration. And I'm going to name it add role to users and adding these users at the end kind of lets Laravel know that we want to change the users table. If you use a different name, you can do the table uh, users to let Laravel know which table you're working with. And once we create the migration, we should have something like this. Basically, we can go ahead and say table uh, string role. Now I'm going to use a var chart, basically a string for the roles. Uh, some people prefer to use basically uh, tiny integers or you can use unsigned tiny integer or just an integer It's up to you uh, but for the sake of the video i'm actually going to go ahead and use a string and the values are going to be admin uh, uppercase editor and user and if you have any other roles obviously those will also be included so basically this is how it's going to you work now, if you use an integer, it's going to obviously use a bit less memory and also be slightly faster, but I don't think that's going to be noticeable on like 99% of projects, especially not on a simple blog like this. So I will go ahead and use role because it's a bit more readable, especially on videos. You can exactly tell what the role is and it's not going to have that big of a difference. So I'll go ahead and use a role. Now you can also go ahead and have a roles table if you guys like. But I think it's a little bit redundant over here because generally, if you are going to have a roles table, it's either because you allow multiple roles per user or you plan to have that in the future or you have permissions and you want to assign permissions to a role. We don't have that. So I think it's a little bit uh, unnecessary to have a separate roles table. It's just extra work and extra complexity. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that. If you want that, you probably can go ahead and use something like Spati roles and permissions package. It just adds all of those out the box and it's super easy to use and it's very well tested. So for our use case, I think this should be uh, more than enough. So we'll, we'll go ahead and use this. Now we can also go ahead and give it a default value if you guys would like for all the existing users because we already we do have some existing users on our database. So I'll go ahead and I'll set this to user later on. I'll use a constant for this instead of hard coding it. But for now, uh, I'll use user over here. So and then on the down method, we also need to drop the, col the table, the column. So let's, let's do table, uh, drop column. So let's do roll. And uh, that's all we need to do, okay? So if you prefer to use uh, integers, you can go ahead and use integers or a number as well. In those cases, it would just be one, two, three, instead of whatever we have over here. Okay, so let's go ahead, save this, guys. And now we need to go ahead and run our migration. So I'll do php artisan migrate. So now it's successfully migrated. And now that we have done the migration, we need to update our user model, okay? So I'll remove these comments that I made. So first we need to add it to our fillable so we can up update it inside a filament admin because filament uses mass assignment. So I'll add it over here. And then I would also like to have a bunch of constant to easily refer to different roles. So I don't want to hard code them. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can have a separate enum class or we can put them inside our user model. I'll go ahead and I'll put it inside the user model because you don't have any other enums and it's not going to take that much space. So I'll just put it over here. And later on, if we need, maybe we can even refactor it inside a trait. So let's go ahead and do something like this. We can say const uh, role admin. And of course, because we are using a string, I'll use admin. If you are using integer, you'll set it to one, two, three. 
you do need to make sure uh, on your you know these numbers stay the same so one two three should be more just just fine and then but in that case i'm going to go ahead and use admin then we need to go ahead and do editor as well as user so editor user so this one should be editor this one should be user so that's all the rules we have and if you want a new role we can always just come over here and create a new constant now again we probably worst case scenario will have one extra rule i don't think we need more than that and last but not least i would also like to have a roles constant to have all the roles in one array so we can easily access it whenever we need all the roles especially inside filament so i'll go ahead and i add them all over here so in order to access a constant inside the class itself we can say self uh, you know double colon a role admin and i'll duplicate this for all the other roles we have now in order to also make this be useful for our filament page i'm going to go ahead and also give it a value and so in this case i'm going to say admin basically a more readable version instead of all caps so let's go ahead and do it for the other ones as well i say editor and in this case we will also have user okay so this will make it so we can easily refer and get the list of all the possible rules we have especially if you want to display it on your blade files and you know some input things like that so now that we have this guys the next thing we need to do is we need to have a way to actually assign a role to a specific user we don't really have that at the moment so we need to go ahead and create a user resource inside our filament admin panel so let's go ahead and do that i'll open up the terminal uh, we can go ahead and type in php artisan make filament resource now i'm not going to try to explain all these commands guys because we have already done it a few times so i assume you guys are already comfortable with it so i'm going to say user now i'm going to use a new command of dash dash generate or tag tag generate this will basically go ahead and try to auto generate all the inputs and tables from our database schema now this won't be perfect but it will just give us a boilerplate which we can uh, customize so i'm going to go ahead and use it in this case hit enter and i believe i have a typo here i do it should be filament so now if we go back and we take a look we should now have a user resource and inside of it if you guys look we already have actually all the text input so that's basically what that dash dash generate does and it uses text twice it's best to you know pick the right uh you know input type so and the same for the table as well so for now i'm going to go ahead and delete all the ones we don't need so i'll remove profile photo i even delete the password uh, i like the password to be a bit more complex i'll just remove it for now later on we will have a separate episode on customizing it adding widgets for like the number of posts and active you know new users so on that episode i'll go ahead and also update the user uh, you know filament form so for now we'll just have these three simple ones basically all the necessary ones name email and role and then on the table same thing i probably will keep uh, created at as well as updated at and then the role as well so let's go back let's reload and let's try one of them i'll click as you can see all of them have the role user so i click on edit and it is indeed working now this role should be actually a drop down not a text input so let's go ahead and fix that now let's find it under our form and instead of this text input let's use a select now selects uh, don't have a max length so i'll remove that i think we also don't need the default so i'll go ahead and just use an options and since we already have defined all the possible roles inside our user model i can just go ahead and basically use this roles variable or this roles constant so let's go ahead and do that we can say a user roles that's it that's all we have to do let's go back do a quick reload and now we get a drop down menu uh, we get the lowercase kind of more readable version so if you have a longer kind of role with you know couple of underlines it will look nice inside the drop down and we should now be able to change uh, the user's role let's go back and as you can see it is indeed working i changed the marcelo's role let's try sean and let's make sean an admin and as you can see it is indeed working let's find my own user i'm using a test user over here so let's set it to admin over here very nice so it is indeed working now one more thing i would like to change as well guys is i would like to change the icon for the users so it should be inside this navigation icon let's change this rectangle stack with users and i think that's there should be a user's icon it is okay so very good now we have our roles we have the ability to assign roles to a user 
but it's kind of useless. So we need to actually prevent regular users from accessing our filament admin. So this is my account, right? Test at test.com. I'm logged in with this user test and I'm setting my role to user. I should not be able to see the admin panel. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this. Now, by default, uh, with filament, it basically, if you're on a local development, all users have the ability to view the admin panel. Okay. And if you go on production and you don't use the default installation, none of the users can access the admin panel. So we need to add some additional piece of code to our user model to actually allow the users to access it on production. So in order to do that, guys, go ahead, open up the filament documentation under panel provider, panel builder, make sure you are on version three under installation. And then there is a section called deploying to production. And basically what this is saying is the same thing I mentioned on local, all users can access, you know, the admin panel, but if you're on production or you want to have the, you know, roles functionality, you need to add this filament user contract or interface to your user class. And then also, you know, implement this can access panel. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just add it on my user model. We can close the user resource. So here I'm going to say uh, implements filament user. So we need to add this contract. Now it's giving me an error because I'm not implementing this method from the contract. So I'll just copy it from here and I'll add it under our roles at the top so we can quickly see it. So it's called can access admin panel. And we also need to implement this panel here or imported panel. And I believe it's a filament panel over here. It's also in over in the example on the filament website, if you guys want to copy it. So let's save it. All the errors are gone. Basically, uh, you need to add this and inside this method, if you return true, that means the current user has access to the panel. And if you return false, it means they do not. So the default check we copied is it's checking the domain for the email and checks if they have verified their email. Now this has verified email will not work because we have not enabled email verification on Fortify. Okay. So Fortify is basically like a sub package of Jetstream that enables the, you know, login registration, things like that. And uh, in order to kind of enable uh, email verification, I do have a separate video on it guys, by the way, but basically you need to go inside your Fortify config file. It's going to be inside config so fortify and it's a setting inside futures which you need to enable okay i do have a separate video on this on my channel but by default this is disabled and i think we don't need to enable it for our block so because we don't have it enabled i'm not going to check for the users if the user is verified or not before they can access the admin panel so i'll get rid of this we also don't need the domain check i'll remove that so what we need to do is we need to check if the user's role is admin or editor only these two roles can access the panel. Okay. So I'll just say, uh, this dot role is equal to self role admin, and it should be double colon twice role admin. And then I'll also do an or statement for editor as well. Okay. So only these two roles can access the admin panel. Now, because we are going to refer or use this a lot throughout our project, instead of having to do the check or, you know, basically do the comparison every time like this, I'll go ahead and create some helper functions over here. I'm going to say public function is admin as well as public uh, function is editor. Now we are obviously assuming that these role names will not change and we will not have any new roles. Okay. So if you have a more complex situation, uh, you may want to go ahead and maybe use a permission. But in this case, I'll move this logic inside here. So I'm going to say return and same for this one. Okay. So from now on, we will go ahead and use this is admin and is editor instead of manually doing the comparison. So let's do this dot is admin or this dot is editor. This also makes it easy to check inside our uh, blade files if you ever need to do that. And that's it guys. So let's go back. Let's try to, I'm already a user. Let's try to reload and basically it kicked me out of the panel. It's giving me a 403 forbidden. So yeah, that's it. So now what we can do is we can either use a PHP Tinker or we can use some sort of database reader. You know, if you have, you can use PHP my admin. I'm using table plus on Mac. So uh, on, you know, Mac OS. So it's up to you to use. Uh, I'll just go ahead and I already have my users table. I'll try to find my user. I believe it is. What's my email? I forgot. Let me just copy it over here. Test at test.com. 
So this is my user and I'll manually uh, go ahead and set it to admin. Okay, so I'm able to access the admin panel. Let's go back, do a quick reload. As you guys see, I'm able to view it. And if I go to editor, I'm still able to edit it, view it. And if I go to user or I set it to user, uh, I get kicked out of the panel. Okay, just like this. So as you can see, so we need to now go ahead and manually set it back to admin. Okay, very nice. Now, before we continue, guys, I did mention that I will not be hard coding this. So now that we have these constants, I'll go ahead and add a new constant. This is optional. You don't have to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and say role. Uh, we can say default. And I say role user. So I'll basically have a, a default role over here. And in case we need it at some point, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and reference it over here instead of hard coding it. In case someone decides to change the name of these roles and they forget to update the migration, okay? Now, it won't cause any issues if we even could have this be an empty string, it will still work because we are not actually referring to the user role anywhere. We just check if it's an admin or editor. The user is just some placeholder, but still, I think it's nice to have. So I'll go ahead and over here say a user a role a default. We could have also used default role, makes a bit more sense grammatically, but let's just use a role default. So we are following the same uh, kind of uh, format. And that's it, guys. So let's save all of this. So the next thing we need to work on is, as I mentioned, the editor should only be able to access posts and categories. The editor should not be able to see users, right? Because, uh, you know, that's what we want. So we need to now prevent editors from accessing our users table and also editing things like that. I also want to prevent the users from deleting posts and categories. Okay. So users job is only to go ahead and publish a new post and maybe create some categories. That's it. That's all they can do. I don't want them to doing anything more than that. So let's go ahead and actually implement that functionality uh, inside filament. Okay, guys. So the way filament uh, kind of decides or uh, prevents users from accessing certain pages is based on a lot of our policies. So if you want to prevent a specific user from accessing, let's say the users, you need to go ahead and create a policy and then, you know, put your logic over there. So that's basically what we are going to use. We're going to use a lot of our policies and prevent our editor from accessing the user page. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you haven't worked with policies before, uh, it's not a requirement, but basically policies are a simple and easy way to define permissions for your models. And I'll show you guys how they work in a second. So the first step is to create those policies and we can go ahead and do that using artisan. So open up a terminal and type in PHP artisan make policy. Now the policy names, the default convention is the model name, the singular name. So it's going to be user, for example, and then followed by policy. Now you can use any other name you like as well. But if you use a different name, you will need to kind of let a lot of well know or register those policies. But if you use this convention, a lot of well automatically uh, kind of finds those policies. So it's a bit easier. And then one more thing you need to do is in this case, uh, we can go ahead and say model equals user. Now this isn't required, but basically if you do this, Laravel will go ahead and create some pre kind of most commonly used actions and add it to the, you know, user policy class. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And if you do that, now you should have a new file under app policies, user policy. So here in this folder, so it's well organized. Then this policy class will have a bunch of classes. Now this will, these class, these methods were added using that dash dash model user. So if you only add this, will you get all these classes, these methods, basically these methods correspond to different common actions inside, you know, uh, Laravel and filament. So view any is this table page. A view is if you have the modal version of viewing a single model. Uh, the create is obviously for creating a new record update, same for editing and creating delete. Then there is a store and force delete if you have a soft deletes enabled. So basically these are all the permissions you generally will have or the most common ones. And of course you can go ahead and create any method you like, and we'll do that in a second as well. So let's go ahead and define these because right now, uh, if I reload, we should get an error. Obviously it is, it's trying to use the policy, but we are not returning anything. So we need to return a Boolean true if the user can't perform this action and then false if they cannot. So for our user policy, only admin can view it. So it's going to be super simple. We can say a uh, user return user is admin. That's it. And as a matter of fact, I'll just copy paste this for everything. So is admin 
is admin. <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. Is admin, is admin. And that's it. So this basically means only an admin can access all these individual permissions on our user model. Okay, so if I go ahead and I do a reload now, I'm getting forbidden because I think I made my account be an editor. So now we are no longer able to see the user's, you know, link over here. And if I reload, I believe, yes, my role is an editor. So I'll manually go ahead and set myself back to an admin and I'll save it. And now we are able to see it. Now, when you're using Filament, guys, if you have enabled bulk deleting and also soft deletes, by default, uh, basically uh, soft deletes and bulk deleting, they, it uses a different, some new uh, kind of action methods we need to manually add, which isn't added by Laravel by default. So in this case, uh, even if you are an, an kind of a, an editor, you still will be able to bulk delete, okay? Now I'm gonna fix that in a second for now, I'll leave it, but I just wanted to mention that uh, I'll fix that once we are working on our post. So basically we have created a permission for the users. Now we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing for our posts and categories as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll open up the terminal, uh, copy the exact same code one for our posts, and I'll name it uh, post policy. And then one for our categories as well, categories. Let's do a category policy. And I believe I made a mistake with the model name. So let's go ahead and delete this category policy. My, my bad. Uh, I did categories. It should be category. All right. So let's go ahead and open up these two new policies we made. So we made category policy as well as a post policy. So these are going to be exactly identical. Basically, what I would like to do is allow both the admin as well as the editor to perform these actions. That's all we have to do. So let's go ahead. I'll copy this exact same piece of code. And of course, guys, this user is the logged in user if you haven't used policies before. So we are going to say if user is admin or user uh, is editor. That's it. And I'll copy paste this for all of them again. Now, we are not using policies for our front end. All right. So if you were to do that, we would probably want to check for some of the, you know, roles like that as well but we are not so i'm not going to be actually doing any additional checks at least not right now later on we might do that and then for restore and force delete i'll actually go ahead and only have admins be able to do that so uh, for all the above we'll have admin and editor but for delete i'll only allow the admin to delete same for restore so if we are using soft deletes and then same for uh, force delete as well okay now, we also need to do the exact same thing for the category policy as well. So let's add all of those as well. And then for delete, uh, same thing as post, only admin should be able to delete. And that is it, guys. So we have now defined these policies. I do have a separate video on policies, by the way, on my YouTube channel, if you guys are a bit not super familiar with them. But in general, it's basically a way to define a bunch of permissions instead of, you know, and separate them by the model itself, okay? So now that we have these guys, Filament should be able to automatically detect those. So if I go ahead and I do a quick reload, we should now be able to basically, everything should be exactly identical. In order to test it out, I'll remove the edit functionality from, let's, let's go ahead and update my role to editor. So I'll find my account, test, and I'll set my role to editor. Of course, if I reload, I'm not able to see the users page. Let's go to the posts. So for right now, I'm able to edit. Let's go ahead and remove the editing functionality from the editor role. So let's open up post policy. I'll find update. So I'll remove the editor role from here. So let's do a reload. And as you can see guys, the edit button is gone. Okay. so. As you can see, that's how it is working. Now, I did mention something about the bulk deletes. So bulk deletes will actually still work, right? So if you look at the policy, we made it so that delete, restore, and force delete are only, uh, you know, something admins can do. But if you actually try it, and you try this kind of bulk delete, you're actually able to delete it even if you're not an admin, okay? In this case, I can bulk delete. What? What's going on, right? That shouldn't be possible. So uh, the reason is, for kind of performance reasons, Filament actually doesn't use these. It uses some extra, instead of manually checking the delete permission on every single uh, you know post, 
it uses one general post any similar to kind of this view any so we need to go ahead and add those uh, now i don't memorize these i usually pick them from the documentation so we need to go ahead and find on the documentation a panel builder go ahead and go on deleting records i'll just search for it oh actually there is one over here adding soft deletes i think it should be mentioned somewhere over here yeah here authorizing soft deletes so basically uh, what we need to do is we need to add delete any and restore any and force delete any okay if you have soft deletes and if you don't have soft deletes just add delete any a lot of filament will go ahead and use these uh, permission actions instead so i will go ahead and do the exact same thing guys i'll copy this delete over here add it over here and then instead of delete we say delete any can bulk delete models i'll come update the comment a little bit more and then we need the exact same thing for uh, restore and force delete as well so i'll go ahead and add it over here i say uh, force restore any as well as force delete any okay and let's just double check the name it is restore any and there is force delete any and i'll also update the comments just in case you can also remove the comments if you guys would like determine whether the user can bulk restore models and then same thing over here permanently bulk delete models and i forgot the l over here so that's it guys now if we try and try to bulk delete again we should no longer be able to do it i have made an type over here what's the issue oh yeah so the thing about restore any and the delete any is it actually does not accept a post so we need to go ahead and remove that obviously it works with multiple posts right so we're not going to accept that same for a delete any if i can find it so we're here and yeah i think that should get the job done let's do a quick reload try again as you can see the button is actually gone okay so it's working uh, same for our categories now for our categories we don't have soft deletes so i'll only go ahead and add delete any okay so the reason we have restore any and uh force delete any on our post is because i enabled soft delete so let's go ahead and find the category policy and i'll add it at the bottom of course there is another thing you could have done you can just disable <laughs> Uh, you know, bulk deletes on your resource page as well if you, you, don't, you don't want it. Okay, guys. So now that this is working, I think we are done. Uh, I would like to do a few more things before we end the video. I know the video is getting a little bit long, but basically, guys, uh, I would like to have, I, I would like to do another refactoring. So on our user model here, we are performing this check can access the admin panel. I would like to also kind of reuse the same functionality or logic on our blade files. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to go ahead and create a separate policy action for it for viewing the admin panel. So basically like a separate permission for viewing it. And I'm going to add it inside our user policy. OK, so at the top, I'll go ahead and I create a new method. I'll say public function. Uh, you can say view admin. You can also have it be admin if you guys prefer. I'll just use view admin because i don't want it to be confused with the admin role so i'll just say view the admin to imply we are viewing the admin panel it is going to accept a user class or basically it's going to be the logged in user and then we're going to return a boolean now these return types are technically optional in php guys you don't have to add them but i still prefer to add these especially for the you know type hinting especially for the user if you don't add this you won't get any of the you know auto suggestions so i think it's good to have now here, uh, I'll copy basically the same logic we have over here. So I'll just copy this, add it over here. So basically, both admin and editor can view the admin panel. You could also have this be view admin panel. It's going to make it a bit too long. I just say view admin, and we should change these to user. Okay, so now that we have this policy action or this permission uh, in this uh, can access panel, instead of checking the roles, we can say this dot can so if you want to check a user has the ability to perform a specific permission on a policy you can use this can there is also cannot so we can say user can the policy action name so in this case it is view admin so you can either use view admin you can also do view admin or you can do view admin all of those three options are possible all basically will use the exact same policy action depending on which you prefer 
just you pick one and be consistent that's my general uh, you know recommendation that's why these options are all over here probably someone needed them or they prefer using it so they are inside laravel but you know you can use whichever you like i prefer this way using a dash in the middle so i'll use this one and then because when you're defining policy actions or permissions there could be another policy maybe inside our post policy with the exact same action name or method name so we need to let laravel know which policy it should use so in those cases we need to pass in basically the model class so i just i just say user class and that should let laravel know hey go ahead and use the user policy so that's it guys let's save this let's go back it should not have any impact on our functionality things should work exactly like they did before so last but not least guys i now would like to add a button on our header when we are logged in as a user with admin functionality or basically a user that can view the admin panel i just want to add a button over here of like admin i think that's nice to have so let's go ahead and add this i believe the blade file we're using is called auth right something like that header right auth yeah over here and actually let's also open up header right guest so we are using this x nav link for all of those so i i just copy this from our header right guest x nav link and I'll move it to header right auth. So instead of login, we are going to say admin. This one is also going to be, well, we don't have a route admin yet. So for the route name, uh, I'm actually not sure what the route is for the filament admin login page. So we can go ahead and check that out by typing in, in our terminal PHP artisan route list. Of course, uh, instead of using route, you can also kind of just use URL or something like that and have uh, you know admin i generally prefer to use the routes route names so if you decide to change the route later on it will automatically reflect reflect the changes on your blade files so in that case we need to go ahead and do php artisan route list and inside here it will list all our routes so we need to find the one for filament so let's see if we can find it we also have this api user we should probably delete that later on Although I think it only works for the logged in user, so it's not, it's not, there is no harm in it, but you know, it's still there. So it's over here. We have admin login, and the route name is filament admin auto login. So I'll just copy this, guys. I'll add it on the route. Uh, I'll also add it for the active state. We don't actually have the active state because the layout is different when we are on that page, but I still add it. So let's save this. Let's go back. Let's do a quick reload. Now we are seeing the link, but the layout is broken. I think the reason is we don't have flex over here. So I'll just go ahead and add flex. So I'll add it to the parent element. Looks nice. Uh, the last thing we need is we need some spacing. So I'll also go ahead and say space X four. And now it looks slightly better. Okay, very nice guys. And if I click on it, obviously I go to this page now. One more issue is I'm using wire navigate on these xnav links. And because the layout and the CSS is different from our front end for the user side to our admin panel, wire navigate is kind of breaking our website. So I don't recommend actually using wire navigate when you have different layouts, unless you, you know, you know, the layouts are compatible. So what I would like to do is instead of, I'm actually don't want to use wire navigate. So let's open up our nav link. I think by default, yeah, it always adds a wire navigate. So we can technically go ahead and use a regular A, a link if you guys like. I'll go ahead and make this wire navigate be optional. So I go ahead and add a new prop of navigate. And then over here, uh, we can just do a quick simple check. Why not? We can maybe say uh, navigate, navigate. And then by default, if it's not defined or no, set it to true. So it should be true by default. And in that case, we can go ahead and add wire navigate. Else we don't add anything. And I believe that's all we need to do. A super simple check over here. Let's save it. Let's go do a quick reload. I'll go back. I'll click on it. It indeed, it's still reloading. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to actually pass this in. So that's why. So now that we have this pop, I can come over here and say uh, navigate false now in order for this false to be interpreted as a php false we need to add a double colon so i'll add that now let's reload and try again 
now it reloaded the page properly. So now the layout is not break, uh, it's not broken anymore. Let's make sure all the other links actually do use navigate and they do indeed. Okay, so I think that should be enough. Uh, now the last thing before I forget guys, we also need to only show the link if the user can view the admin panel. Right now we are showing it for everyone. So let's go ahead and do a quick check. We can use the Laravel can directive, a lot of a blade directive can, and this allows you to check against a user policy or gate. So in this case, we have this view admin, we can go ahead and say can, and this basically is like saying the logged in user can. So I'm going to say can view admin. As I mentioned, guys, you can also do view admin. But I'm going to use this one because I also use the same uh, kind of format inside my user model. And then we also need to pass in the user class, same thing we did over here. So I'll copy this, although we do need to add the full namespace inside our blade file. So I'm going to say app models uh, user class. So if the user can view the admin page, go ahead and show them this admin link. Now let's format the blade file. And I think that's all we have to do, guys. Let's go back, do a quick reload. Obviously, I'm an admin right now. Let me uh, go ahead and manually set my role to user and it should be user all cap. Let's do a reload. Obviously it kicks me out of the admin panel. And if I reload, we no longer see the, you know, the link. Now the way that our system works, if we also, if the user has some random role, it still should work. We're not gonna get any exceptions. They just won't be able to access the admin panel, okay? And that's okay. I think that's kind of what we expect. We don't want any errors to happen. However, one more thing I would like to do guys, we do have the role added as a default on our migration over here but i also would like to have an extra check in case you decide not to use the default so i would like to set the role manually when they log in so let's go ahead let's open up our uh, folders basically by default uh, jetstream has under this actions fortify create new user so this is where the logic for creating a new user is inside jetstream right so this create method is called. We can go ahead and set the role over here as well. If you want a different default role or you didn't set a role on your migration, okay? So if we didn't have this, we would have to make sure we add it inside this create new user. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add it on both of them. So you guys can see how it works. In this case, I'll say once we create a new user, set the role to user a role default, okay? If you don't want to use this role default, you can just set it to whatever you like. In this case, I say role, uh, you know, user, it's up to you. But I set it back to default in this case, so we can, if we decide to change it inside uh, this user model, it would go ahead and also change it in both places. But you don't have to necessarily do it this way. So I believe that's it, guys. Uh, we have covered all I wanted for today's episode, and the video is already extremely long, probably the longest episode we have. So I'll end the video today. Maybe one last thing I would like to change is on our comment model. Uh, on inside our post relationship this should actually be a post uh, it was mentioned by you guys on i believe the previous episode so thanks for pointing it out that's a mistake we had let's also fix this and that's it guys for today's episode very long episode thank you all for watching if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section below as always if you're new to the channel make sure you like the video and subscribe show some love and i see you guys on the next episode have a great day bye